Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. So for today's session, the guest speaker is Dr. I feel like there is some technical glitch. Dr. couldn't unmute himself. So to continue with, uh, Dr. Arvind has done his PhD from Center of Biomedical Engineering, IIT Delhi. He was also a professor and a head of department in biomedical engineering. Doctor has a scientist F as the Institute of Aerospace Medicine, IAF Bangalore. Dr. Arvind has been a registrar of IAM, IAF for 17 years and has conducted the M involving all the activities of academic administration right from he has also set up various labs, test and evaluated facilities in IAM IIT Delhi. And doctor has also published 45 publications in national, international, general and conference. So a very warm welcome to you, doctor. You can take over the session from here. Thank you, Kanika, for that uh introduction. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Today, I will be talking to these young medical graduates about this field of aerospace medicine, or to make it more explicit, aviation medicine and space medicine. See, as you know, this field is a very niche area, and it is not common. And therefore, our medical graduates are not familiar with what this field comprises of and what it is like to be an aviation or a space medicine specialist. So today, I will give them all the information that I think is more relevant for them to make their, <coughs> excuse me, to make their career choice as an aviation medicine specialist. So shall we start with the presentation, Kanika? Yes, doctor. Yes, you can share the presentation. Yeah, there we are. I hope people can see the presentation. To start with, I'll, the lecture will be uh, on these lines. They'll, I'll have an introduction and there'll be specific problems of demanding environments and applications of medicine and technology to these conditions. And I shall conclude with the, uh, shall I say, specialities and simulators of aerospace medicine. In today's high-tech man-machine environment, man is the weakest link. All our efforts are to monitor, strengthen, support, and protect this human being. High performance supersonic aircrafts make excessive demands on human system performance under extreme adverse conditions of critical missions and hostile environments like high gravitational forces, high altitude, vibration, etc. The techniques and knowledge of the various branches of engineering and technology are gainfully employed to find technological solutions to these problems. <clears throat> Humans are designed for terrestrial activity. Other environments of aviation, space, and under the sea are alien to this physiological system. Specialized multidisciplinary field that addresses the study of human performance under alien environments of aviation and space is the field of aerospace medicine. Here we come across a screened population and the subjects are already fit and they are better than the normal population. The aim is to improve and extend the range of human performance. Read the contact number of us in the chat box. It's good, it's good. Did not receive email the same. Can you mute please? The field of therapeutics is excluded. Now, since this field has a huge engineering content, biomedical engineering is very important uh, part of this subject. Applic it is the application of engineering principles to life sciences, 
and it involves application of knowledge under various branches of engineering to life systems. At the outset, <clears throat> the aviation environment is extremely demanding and hostile. There are two types of environments that you come across. One is the internal environment and the other is the external environment. Internal environment is the environment within the body, which we will not discuss today. But looking at the external environment, we have the terrestrial environment, which is the environment on ground, where we come across different climatic conditions, which you doctors are already trained to handle. Whereas the alien environment are those of aviation, space, and under the sea. So aviation medicine or space medicine deals with these environments. Going further, coming to the uh, aviation uh, scenario, we have different types of aircrafts like the fighter aircraft, commercial aircraft, helicopters, and spacecrafts. I have written the kinds of stresses that you will encounter or subjects or humans will encounter in these different aircrafts. The stressors in each category and the requirements for effectively countering these stressors of, e for, of each of these classes are different. Now, stresses in aviation can be broadly classified into three groups, physical stresses, physiological stresses, and psychological stresses. All stressors lead to increased physical and mental workload. Workload assessment through non-invasive telltale physiological variables like HRV, etc., indicating the physical and mental state of the subject are studied in detail. The physical environment is the environment in which the human being operates in aviation or space. It has, it includes altitude, wherein hypoxia stress plays in, then temperature, hot temperatures and cold temperatures, vibration, G-stress, high and low, noise and acoustic and electromagnetic noise play a very major havoc on human beings, the exposure to radiation, light, effects of vision, <coughs> low light conditions and night flying. Coming to the physiological stresses, it is the response of bodies to these environmental conditions, is the body demands and responses. It results in phys of physical stresses on the human body. The severity and the effects depend on the magnitude and duration of these stresses. Then comes the psychological component, which is uh, caused because of the pressure of flying itself. The mission that the pilot has to accomplish under these conditions and the pressures of life situations or personal problems. All these uh, add on to the stressors and the workload of the pilot who is negotiating a critical mission. Then coming to specific problems of aviation, as we listed out earlier, we have hypo and hyper thermal environments of cabins and cockpits. We have hypoxia stress. We have decompression sickness spatial disorientation wherein the human mind uh, misinterprets the cues and then he has to depend and learn on instrument flying. Then G-induced loss of consciousness, where, which leads to, uh, under the high G conditions, it leads to gray out, red out, black out, and loss of consciousness. Then fire flyers face with air sickness. Then we have the radiation exposure to ionizing and non-ionizing radiations and proper design of suits to prevent these harmful effects. Then we have the noise with mainly in helicopters and few old generation aircrafts. Auditory effects may be temporary or permanent and may shift the thresholds of hearing and also cause damage to the hearing organ. Non-auditory effects can be headache, irritability, psychological conditions, etc. Coming to visual illusions, low light and contrast conditions, glare, and whiteout and night flying conditions have posed challenges to aviators. Visual assist devices, head up displays, helmet mounted displays, night vision goggles, all these aid in countering visual illusions. <clears throat> then we have vibration mainly in helicopters, which are in the low frequency ranges of 4 to 25 hertz, but this matches with the natural frequencies of body regions and organs leading to resonance. This leads to increased effects on the spine and low backache is a common problem that we encounter in the aviation environment. Then we have high sustained G and long duration fighter flying, air to air refueling, and these things are setting in more problems to aviators. Then with the recent introduction of 
uh, fight or flying to women. This has given us more challenges to aviation medicine practitioners because the anthropometry or the body measurements are different. The cockpits are largely designed for male population, but they are being changed. And the clothing are also designed for males, which are being changed. Problems of physiological origin, like menstruation and pregnancy, play a significant role. Tolerance levels for physical stresses are different for men and women. Then different psychological makeup. Women have a different makeup, like mood variation, fluctuations, as compared to those of males. So the flying environment and the flight health of the flyers should be maintained under all these conditions. Coming to space, the environment is entirely different. Here, the gravity is lower than that of Earth. This is called microgravity conditions. This leads to space sickness, weightlessness, cardiovascular deconditioning, vestibular deconditioning, bone and mineral loss, food and water carrying them in space and managing them, conservation and recycling of resources like air, water, etc., excretion and waste management. All these problems are related to spacecraft and space flight. Now we are planning to have human missions in space. We are planning to have space tourism. So there's a wide area of knowledge which is wanting, which we have to fill in before these can be uh, commercialized. We also have problems of radiation, temperature, hypoxia, pressure management, noise and space clothing design, microdiabetes diabetes simulators and training for training and conditioning. Now, what is common in all this is the limitations that the human body gives us or the environments expose us for monitoring the human being. All measurements must essentially be non-invasive. We cannot have invasive methods for measurements or monitoring. All techniques must be non-intrusive. The equipment, electrodes, transducers must not intrude or interfere with the function, normal functioning of the uh, aviator or the astronaut. It should not increase the workload or play additional demands on the aircraft or on the air crew of the, or the dwelling vehicle in spacecraft. All equipment and procedures must be well integrated with the clothing and the environment. All equipment and procedures must be safe and safety certified. Potentially hazardous equipment and inflammable liquids are not allowed in space or in aviation vehicles. So coming to uh, life support system design, yet I don't expect medical graduates to be designing these systems, but then you should know the requirements. You should spell out the requirements for engineers or biomedical engineers to design them. And you should also know about how to evaluate the systems if they are performing as per requirement. Hence, a knowledge of engineering would be uh, desirable. So here we have the design of life support systems, uh, ejection seats, oxygen systems, mass and communication systems, parachutes, personal survival packs, etc. Human measurements play a very important role, that is anthropometry, and design of flying clothing like measure jackets, jerkins, helmets, shoes, etc. I did mention earlier about the night vision goggles, helmet mounted devices, head up displays, and human in engineering and design safety on systems and equipment is a very significant role. The other areas which overlap with aviation and space in uh, medicine are applied psychology, human performance and workload assessment, both physical and mental workloads. Ergonomics, cockpit and workspace design, very important because that is where the fighter flyer is sitting and is expected to perform at his peak efficiency. The design and development of dummies is important for testing, simulation, evaluation. Crew research and cockpit resource management, human factor analysis, these are all psychology areas which are overlapping into aerospace medicine. And in case of accident, it is important and imperative to investigate into the cause of the accident so that future accidents can be prevented. Therefore, recreation and reconstruction of the accident site and conditions is an important area. Then coming to the technical requirements of the technical people, they are using 
advanced signal processing techniques, image and image processing techniques, telemedicine and telemetry to monitor the pilots or the space astronauts for their airworthiness. Then we have equipment which go into the aircraft, which have to be tested for end flight certified for airworthiness. Survival and safety, very important. I don't have to stress again. Medical informatics or data management is an integral part of modern day digital uh, equipment design. Then we have design and development of models, training area aids, simulators for training and indoctrination and performance evaluation of both human subjects and equipment. So these are some of the broad areas which an aviation medicine specialist is exposed and is expected to know about in the whole course of three years. Coming to simulators, simulators are equipment which simulate the actual conditions of flying environment in order to study, design and test equipment and protection system. They are also used for human training, adaptation and indoctrination. Simulators permit monitoring of relevant physiological parameters for assessment and evaluation of human performance. Some of the simulators which are available at the Institute of Aerospace Medicine is the human centrifuge, where a human being is exposed to high levels of uh, G, it's called the high performance human centrifuge. And this equipment can simulate uh, conditions up to 12 G. That is 20 times the gravitational force that you face on Earth. Then we have a high altitude simulator, explosion decompression chamber, rapid recompression or the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, then we have the hot cockpit and environmental chamber. We have a dry flotation tank to simulate microgravity conditions. We have a spatial disorientation, motion sickness simulator, vibration simulator, force and range platform, night vision laboratory to train pilots for night vision uh, usage. Then there's a GMTD or a gimbal mounted tumbling device. Some of the other anthropometric evaluations at the human engine department, are listed there. Maybe that's only for academic importance and interest for you people. So therefore, uh, in today's high-tech man-machine environment, as I told earlier, man is the weakest link. Humans are designed by nature for terrestrial activities and other environments of aviation and space and under the sea are alien. Air combat maneuvers in high-performance aircrafts or in spacecrafts make excessive demands on human performance under extreme and adverse conditions of critical missions, hazardous and hostile environments, high G, high altitude temperature, et cetera, and man has been stretched to the limits of his performance. The solutions lie in technology, and this is where aerospace medicine and biomedical engineering comes into play. This disciplinary knowledge under various branches of engineering and medicine can be exploited beneficially to provide technological solutions to monitor, strengthen, support, and protect this human being, and thereby enhance and extend the range of, of human performance under such adverse conditions. It is expected that this challenging field of aerospace medicine opens newer areas for active research and to biomedical engineers doctors and scientists likewise. So thank you very much. And I conclude. I'm open for a question answer session now. Thank you.